Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Captain's Table. I am your host, Captain Beanard, and topic of discussion today is going to be the Fortnite phenomenon. And here to discuss that with me from the Twitch channel, Felt's Wild, making her debut on the Captain's Table, we have Felt's Wild herself. Welcome to the Captain's Table. Hello. Hi, yes, hi indeed, and thank you for joining me to discuss Fortnite, which is, uh, aside from Pokemon, of course, which I'm sure you all know is the primary game that I play, Fortnite is uh, definitely up there for a game that I have spent a considerable amount of time playing, so um, with everything going on right now, I thought the time was right to kind of talk about uh, the elephant in the room in the gaming industry the past couple of years, which has been Fortnite, So, um, and one of my chief uh, teammates, I guess you would say, or uh, people that I play this game with all the time is you. So, um, yes, so you are uh, the one to discuss the game with. So, um, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to do a rundown of uh, Fortnite, the game, kind of a general overview, and kind of throw a bunch of facts and figures out that you guys may or may not know about the game, and a lot of information, and we're also going to kind of talk about our um, personal experiences on the game as well, and kind of how we feel about it, and um, just sort of the history, and uh, up to present day, all the way from the very beginning. So, uh, yeah, that is the game plan. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Nope, I'm just ready to roll. All right, well, let's get rolling. So, uh, Fortnite, actually, um, and this is something that I didn't even know until I started doing a little bit of research about the game. Uh, Fortnite was actually announced all the way back in 2011 from uh, Epic Games, and um, I don't remember that at all, actually. Um, But, yeah, apparently they announced it back in 2011, and uh, it was not released until 2017, so uh, quite a long development time for this game, um, which is kind of surprising, given the actual, you know, quality of the game we got, not as far as, like, you know, how fun it is, but, um, you know, just, like, graphics and, you know, content and all that sort of stuff, but, um, yeah, so I think they used Unreal Engine 3 to develop it, although I'm not a super technical guy, so I'm not going to get too far into the technical side of uh, the game development, but um, the game released back on July 25th of 2017, this is the main game, uh, and then the Battle Royale mode, which is, of course, the most famous version of the game, or, you know, feature of the game, uh, came out on September 26th of 2017, so we are pretty much right around that uh, three-year mark since the game's release, so that's kind of kind of one of the reasons why I thought it would be a good idea to do this now. Um, I know you and I were both kind of surprised a little bit um, that they didn't do anything for the the technical three-year birthday of Fortnite, which just passed on July 25th, um, because I know they've made a big deal about that in the past, right, on Mm -hmm. on the game with, like, uh, what, like... like, They have big birthday cakes and the balloons... And the candle above the bus. Yeah, Yeah. the decorations and all that kind of stuff. So um, maybe they're waiting. Um, I kind of, and I thought about this, and I kind of don't remember if they did that. Uh, I feel like they did it in July, not in um, September. So, like, I feel like they were doing that to commemorate in the past the release of the main game, not the release of the Battle Royale mode. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just remembering that wrong. I don't know. Um, I don't remember, to be honest, either. So I guess we'll find out um, within the next couple of months if that's the case. But um, in any event, so um, uh, the Battle Royale mode was really what we're going to be talking about here because that is kind of like the main thing when it comes to Fortnite, right? So, Mm -hmm. um, so far at this point in time, we've had 13 seasons of the Battle Royale mode, and... uh, I guess after the first 10, they started calling it Chapter um, Mm 2, you know, Seasons 1 and up. So um, I just want to do kind of a brief rundown of those seasons, kind of, and what they entailed uh, in the the, um, Battle Royale mode again, because that is really what we're going to be focused on here. So um, Season 1, and I guess um, there's really been kind of sort of a theme to most of these seasons. Uh, They've tried to, you know, be gimmicky and change it up with a whole bunch of different stuff. 
So season one, which was uh, bat that debuted back in uh, September of 2017, uh, that one there really w wasn't any of a theme to, and I'm just speaking from uh, what I'm reading here because I actually have uh, didn't play the game back then, and actually uh, I don't believe you did either. Um, I actually, actually, this was something I was going to mention before, but kind of forgot. Um, so as far as my history with Fortnite goes, I'll footnote that real quick before we get into, you know, the facts and figures. Uh, I started playing Fortnite in season four. Uh, so that was in like mid 2018, uh, that I started playing it. And, um, yeah, I was about halfway through season four, I think. Uh, when did you start playing the game there? Felts. Um. Well, I I started playing Save the World actually almost re like when I first started, but okay. um, Battle Royale. Yeah. I played it on and off. I think I started around season three, maybe four, gotcha. but I didn't start playing playing until about season six. Gotcha. Yeah. So you were just kind of like a here. You really just focused on Save the World, and then. Um, played the Battle would, Royale here and there. I, I liked the Team Rumble. That was my go-to for a while. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that and that's uh, one of the modes that I think a lot of people who are either beginners or they're not super competitive, that's the mo the game mode that they tend to gravitate to, or at least historically anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, But yeah, now that we have that out of the way, which I wanted to say in the beginning but forgot, um, <laughs> in any event, uh, we're going to get back into the season. So yeah, so season one, as I mentioned, uh, there really wasn't much of a theme to that. Um, but again, this is for just from reading uh season two then that uh opened the beginning of 2018 they had a medieval-ish theme to that i guess and again i don't really remember that because i didn't play the game at that point no. um and uh important thing to note here is that um the seasons of the uh battle royale mode were actually much shorter back then so season one um that lasted about three months in the latter part of 2017, then season two uh, in the beginning of 2018 lasted about two and a half to three months. So a lot of the earlier seasons uh, were just very short. They were kind of like shotgunning content, just throwing it out as quickly as possible. And I think that was one of the uh, the big reasons that so many people kind of came to this game so fast um, was just the, the constant updating and uh, release of new content and things changing. Um, but we'll kind of get into that a little bit later as we uh, talk about, you know, uh, a few other things. But okay. um, so then uh, moving along, uh, then we had season three, which was, I guess, space themed. And that lasted about two or three months as well. Um, then we get to season four, which was uh, superhero themed. That was when I came in. Um, and I remember uh, Jump Rocks. That, those were a big... Uh, thing that you could pick up in certain spots in the map that would allow you to you know you know jump around and really high and all that stuff you remember those oh i loved those those were fun yeah those were really fun um in the game so i was pretty sad when they took those out and i don't remember if it was like season five or six that they took those out something like that but um but yeah so uh then uh season five was actually i guess time travel theme that lasted about two and a half three months as well um, then we had season six, which was like uh, Halloween, like monster themed. Um, that lasted about three months. Um, and that was probably the first season that I started to get really serious with the Battle Royale and uh, playing. And I believe you mentioned that as well um, yep. for you. Yeah. And that, I think that was when we started gaming together, too, actually, if I'm not mistaken maybe <laughs> yeah I, th I think so I mean don't quote me on that but I think that's what it was but anyway yeah so um yeah the season six um then we had uh season seven which was like Christmas winter themed uh which was again about a three-month season um we had season eight which was the uh pirate ninjas um which was uh, a lot of fun I thought and that lasted about yeah. three months as well that was another season that I played a lot of um, so yeah, seasons, uh, six, seven, and eight, I really played, uh, played the game quite a lot. Um, then season nine was like the, the futuristic, uh, themed, and that was about a three month season as well, but I really didn't play that season too much, actually. Um, I don't really remember what I was doing, if there was another game that I was playing, or if I just wasn't super into that theme, but 
I didn't really play the game too much actually in season nine. Um, but then season 10, I kind of came back in a big way and that was, uh, well, I, I don't really know actually if there was like a theme to season 10. I just remember that, that everything was just one big mess kind of. <laughs> yeah. Like, and all the places were changing. And... Yeah. It was a really weird time in the game because like that. So, so like map updates is, is a big key feature of Fortnite. Right. And mm -hmm. in season 10, they just kind of went crazy with it. And it was just like every week almost, they had like those rift zones and like, um, you know, just like everything, you know, different rules or like a different, you know, gimmick for like different spots on the map and stuff like, uh, you know, uh, Taco Time and uh, Greasy Grove or whatever it was. Uh, Tilted Town. <laughs> yeah, Tilted Town. No building, no breaking. Shout out to yeah. the Galilee Napper. Another, <laughs> got, got to shout him out. Another uh, tried and true member of the captain's crew. Uh, the, the, the team of uh, Fortnite players, Fortnite regulars. Um, but yeah, and then, um, what was it? They brought back a uh, Mosty Meyer and they had the crouch to prop thing, which was weird, but I, I kind of go, went back and forth as to whether I liked that or not. But, um, but yeah, uh, so then, um, the big overhaul kind of came with season 11 slash chapter two, season one, where they, um, for those of you who may know, they destroyed the map and then the game was a black hole for like, how long was it? Do you remember? Was it, was it a week or was it like a few days? Um, I don't think it was a full week. Might it have been like five days. Maybe I kind of blocked it out because <laughs> that was a horrible time in our lives because we just wanted to play Fortnite and we couldn't. <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't like admitting that, but yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, I'm I'm uh, I'm not too proud to admit it. I mean. Uh, I've always had Pokemon to fill the void, but, um, you know, I was, I was disappointed. I was logging in every day and I was like, what the hell? There's just this black hole. Like, where's the game? I want to play it, you know? And like yeah. the, the internet also lost its shit around that time. Oh <laughs> yeah. That, that was, that was fun. Um, but yeah. And then, um, I think though, I will say, I think the, I think it was worth the wait because there was just a complete, overhaul of the map um in you know season 11 slash chapter 2 season 1 which was something that was very sorely needed i think as far as the map goes because as i mentioned the map just kind of got like super messy and there was just all this crazy stuff and it was just too busy so it really just needed an overhaul and uh it got it so um you know that was a good thing and uh so yeah that was the uh that season was like you know a new world and like, you know, adventure and, you know, uh, just all that kind of stuff. And they introduced like so many new mechanics, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and, and then they also introduced much longer seasons, uh, which is a big thing. Um, mm -hmm. game changer and not necessarily for the better in my opinion. Um, cause this season, uh, actually lasted five months about, which was very long compared to the seasons that we've seen prior, um, where every season, uh, one through 10 lasted about two to three months, um, like two and a half to three months, roughly. Um, but this season yeah. lasted five. So that's almost double. So that's a long time, uh, for the same season. And then, uh, of course, uh, following that we had, uh, season 12 slash chapter two, season two, which was the, uh, secret agent theme, uh, which was pretty neat. We spent a lot of time playing that not that long ago. <laughs> um, nope. <laughs> and that was about four and a half, five months as well. And of course, currently we are in season thir 13 slash chapter two, season three, which is of course the summer slash water slash surfing theme. And who knows how long that will last. We don't know. It says August 27th, but okay. we'll but, see. Yes, because as we know, um, these seasons lately, especially, uh, with, you know, the beginning of chapter two of Fortnite, the seasons have been delayed quite frequently, um, which kind of lends to the longer seasons, I think, because I think all these seasons actually were only scheduled to last, if I'm not mistaken, three, you know, maybe three or four months, maybe four months, I think now, but then they end up getting pushed back to almost five months. So that's, that's a long time with without updates so um yeah. we are definitely going to talk a lot about that when we get into kind of the Fortnite legacy that we get to um in a little bit so 
Um, so yeah, that's kind of the history of Fortnite, um, the Fortnite map anyway. Um, so a couple of big milestones that I want to point out, and maybe I should have pointed them out when I um, did when I touched the season, but once again I forgot. So oh, well. it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so um, my big milestones for the game, I think, were uh, season two uh, was when they actually introduced the battle pass to Fortnite. So that was a big, big, big game changer because um, the battle pass is like a really a key feature of um, Fortnite for a lot of different reasons, actually, and. Um, the most of which is that it really um, it heavily encourages people to play the game because you pay basically ten dollars American um, to get the battle pass. It's nine fifty, but I'm gonna say ten. Um, but you pay that to get the battle pass, and then um, you have to level up from level one to a hundred, and you unlock all sorts of different stuff along the way. So you get you know emotes, skins. Um, costumes, you know, uh, gun skins, all that stuff, you know, and also um, money as well. V-Bucks, of course, the in-game currency for Fortnite. So the big incentive here is if you make that initial investment on the battle pass of 950, then you actually get, I think they've changed a little bit over the seasons, but it, you get roughly like 12 or $13, something like that, I think, right? Yeah, or is it I think more? so. I don't know. I think it's like 12 or like 13, something like that. Maybe 14. Anyway, um, so yeah, so the Battle Pass more than pays for itself, and that's the big selling point is because you, if you make that initial investment, it encourages you to play the game because if you play the game and level up all the way to level 100, then you're going to more than make your money back, which will pay for the next battle pass. So this is something that uh, I think we'll probably mention again uh, when we get to kind of the genius design of Fortnite, you know, a little bit later. Um, but um, yeah, uh, that's obviously a huge, huge, huge thing to, to keep people interested and keep people playing the game and keep people invested in putting their time into the game. So that's a huge one. Um, the next big one that I can think of is actually Season 8 with the addition of the Reboot Van. So that was like a huge, huge, huge game changer because, um, again, one of the key features of Fortnite, um, which I'm sure everyone you know who is listening will be familiar with, is the fact that uh, it, since it is a Battle Royale uh, game, you only get one life on Fortnite. So it used to be that, you know, obviously when you lose all your health, you get knocked down. If you die when you're knocked down, you're just dead and gone. You're out of the game. So that's, you're done at that point, which is, you know, a Battle Royale style game. So with the addition of the reboot van, now you get a second chance, essentially, if you're playing a team mode, your teammates can pick up your card and revive you at a reboot van. So that really, really, really changed the game, kind of made it um, more, I guess, worth it or more essential to work together on team modes and, and kind of uh, more definitely a lot more team-oriented and also giving you that second chance of kind of being able to um, to come back if you were, uh, you know, eliminated from the game, uh, which was something I think the game sorely needed, um, you know, and I think you would probably agree with that because I don't know, do you even remember Back to the Days without the reboot van? <laughs> I do, but I honestly didn't think the reboot van had been in that long. Yeah, it has. It's season it feels eight. like it has only, well, it's only, to me, it's only feeling like it's been there for a couple of seasons, but I knew it was there Longer. before, you know, chapter two. And it's just, I didn't think it was season eight. No, I it was. <laughs> yep. Wow. Yeah, it's been there for a long time. And it, yeah, it feels actually to me, I actually have the exact opposite effect as you because to me it feels like it's been there forever <laughs> like, I, like i don't even barely remember a time on fortnite where there wasn't a reboot van you know where i so, had to revive you so many times you don't remember that oh actually i think it works where, i think that's you know? where that works the other way i think i had to revive you, you. Yeah. all right well we'll do it we'll do a count we'll start counting uh next time we play <laughs> but um yeah and then of course the um the only other milestone, big milestone, I think, um, was uh, Season 11, of course, with the map that I mentioned before, just the complete overhaul of the map. So, um, as we mentioned, Fortnite was very, um, very 
famous or infamous for map updates so Fortnite, the, the kind of the charm of it is it's you know always just one big map and it's for it's the same until they change it so um they've changed a lot about the map over the years um the locations and the items and the things you know and the weapons and that kind of thing that you can you can pick up um but no greater change in the game had occurred than when they started season 11 which was you know chapter 2 season 1 they call it um so that was the largest change that they've ever made on the map um which was a complete overhaul of the map and i think it was only like three locations that remain the same right it was a uh, retail um, row yeah pleasant park and yeah, I mean, and it was just... salty springs. Yes, salty. Why do I always forget about salty springs? Because <laughs> we never go there. Because I, those are. I mean, I, I've I've come to like Retail Row, but the other is I hate Pleasant Park and I hate Salty Springs because they're just they're the, those locations, folks. They're just the worst. They have minimal loot, always, like always crowded. Yeah, it just it's terrible. So, um, but anyway, so yeah, that was the other big milestone. I don't know if you have anything else you want to add. I know there's there's been a lot of other milestones in the Fortnite game, but those I kind of wanted to just mention like the really big ones to me because if we talked about like if we started to get into more of the minutia, then that would just take all day. We don't have all day. Oh, I agree. So, um, but yeah, I don't know if there's anything else big that you want to mention. Nothing that there's big. Gotcha. Like you said, just all like the small stuff, like vehicles and everything. But other than that, there is a yeah. They've done a lot of cycling vehicles, cycling guns, um, cycling yeah. items, uh, both ones that you can carry and just you know pickups and yeah. changing name locations and 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 evolving, just evolving. And that's um, the next thing I wanted to get into actually. So it's a good segue. Um, oh, well, there you go. Yes, I'm, I've learned segues from uh, my buddy uh, Crashlove37 at Crashlove Gaming. Unexpected shout out to him. I wasn't planning on it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Um, so, how did? So the next question that I want to talk about now that we kind of have like a general, you know, idea of the history of Fortnite. How did Fortnite become so goddamn popular? That that is the burning question. The next burning question I want to tackle here, and um, one of the big reasons. Um, well, I'll start with the obvious one. Okay, so the obvious is that it's free. So that is a huge, 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 huge. Did I mention huge? selling point about this game is that you do not have to drop $60 to play this game like you do with most of every other game. Um, it's free. You can download it for free on your PlayStation like I did and play the Battle Royale mode for free. You never have to spend a penny on this game if you don't want to. And that is a big hook for this game. So um, another thing aside from that um, another big thing that, and we did mention that briefly, you know, just a little bit ago, is the evolution aspect of the game. So this game is constantly changing; it's constantly evolving. Although in the past few seasons, we've seen it has slowed down, um, but that there's always a constant change. They're taking guns out, they're putting new guns in, they're returning old guns, new items, returning old items, you know, changing locations on the map, changing, you know, pickups, changing buildings, just changing everything, yet the core of the game remains the same, and that's why it's such a hook, I think. Would you not agree? Um, yeah, I would say, I would say so. It's a simple Battle Royale game, and it's got something different that others don't, and... Yes, and that was um, the next point I wanted to mention, which is um, it is simple on the face of it, yet it does take a level of skill to master, which uh, that it seems like a very simple concept, but that is a huge, huge, huge selling point in my opinion, because Fortnite, and you know, this has kind of changed in recent seasons again, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but historically, Fortnite has really been a game that anybody can pick it up and anybody can play it. The controls are simple, the concept is simple, um, you know, the design is simple essentially. The map, you know, there's one big map, you know, you 
jump in, you start with nothing, you have to pick everything up, you have to eliminate everyone else. It's a third-person shooter combined with a builder um, in a battle royale type setting. And that is the next kind of point I wanted to bring up, which is lends to the uniqueness of Fortnite. Because for Fortnite is not the first battle royale game. I don't remember or know what the first battle royale game was. It probably doesn't either. exist anymore. Um, it is not certainly not the first third-person shooter. It is certainly not the first builder, but it is the first game to kind of combine all of those things together in a fun, kind of like easygoing way that really just is kind of like an everyman type game, or at least historically anyway, that's what Fortnite has felt like is just an everyman type game, you know, something that, you know, it's a unique everyman type game that anyone can pick it up, anybody can play it, but at the same time, it does reward, you know, the time that you put in and the skill that you develop and the, you know, the uh, difficulty in, you know, building especially to kind of you know, master the game. So it, it's kind of like almost, I want to say, taking the best of a lot of different worlds and like sticking it all together into just one giant conglomerate. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it is very, is very unique. And I think that's, you know, that's probably the biggest, um, the biggest perk of the game, I believe, in at least in my estimation anyway, is just that is, is people, I think, when this game came out, we're really just hungry for something different because how many Call of Duties have you played? You know, how many Battlefields have you played? How many, you know, just every other type of, of game that's similar have you played? You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. like, people just wanted something different. And this filled the void and checked all the boxes. And, you know, I think that's why it, it sprang up so so hard. So, Yeah. Um, just a, just a one of a kind, really. Um, it really is. Yes. And, um, speaking of that, um, we are now going to talk about, um, well, we'll talk about, uh, popularity and money because that is, as you can tell by my beautiful low quality thumbnail there, uh, a big, big, big part of Fortnite is the money. So as I mentioned, the game is free, so mm-hmm. you can get the game for free, you can play the game for free, you never have to spend a penny on it. However, <laughs> Fortnite <laughs> is a billion dollar, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A billion dollar enterprise, we'll say that. So, okay. how, you ask, is it possible that a free game can generate billions of dollars in revenue? How, Feltz? How is that possible? Um, uh, you know, stupid little kids like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't try- I wasn't asking you to throw yourself under the bus, but, but yes, a lot of the, uh, and you're not a kid, by the way, you are illegal. I know. But, um, just, you know, nobody, nobody send, uh, the, the internet police after me, please. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so Fortnite in the year 2018, which was actually the first, um, full year that Fortnite was out as a game generated 2.4 billion billion oh. with a B dollars of revenue billion <sighs> which was a record breaking number obviously the top grossing game of the year and that was a record breaking amount of money that this game generated so let's just think about that for a second a free game oh. made 2.4 billion dollars in one year how is that possible and and you know since you throw yourself under the bus i will say because my my guest here uh a lot of that money came out of her pocket we'll say we'll say maybe probably i'd say maybe about eh, half of that would came out of your pocket would you say what (laughs) no i'm just kidding but um but no uh so the the reason being in my opinion anyway is that the game creates a no pressure environment. You know, there's a store, as I'm sure everyone knows, and there are, you know, skins to buy for your character, for your gun. Emotes are a big popular one as well. There's the 
pickaxe skins for the harvesting tool, um, backpacks, um, you name it. So there's all this customization, all these customization options for your character in this game. And again, this is all 100% optional and, might I add, 100% cosmetic, which is actually in my opinion, a big selling point and a, actually a good thing about this game because this game is not a pay-to-win game, which, as a side note, I have to say, I absolutely despise pay-to-win games. I think they're... Oh, the, so do I. Yes, I think they're the biggest load of shit, and I think that if anyone likes the pay-to-win games, then I don't think you're a real gamer. Come and argue with me about it. But anyway, <laughs> so... Ouch. um yeah, so pay to win, you know, for those of you who might not know, um, is that the stuff that you purchase in the store actually affects how good you can do in the game. So it may be perks or abilities or gun modifications or, you know, that kind of stuff that gives you an actual advantage in winning the game. So that kind of stuff I hate. This kind of stuff on Fortnite I'm completely okay with, because again, it's all 100% cosmetic, which means it's 100% optional, which means you could, again, you could be the top-rated Fortnite player in the world and have never spent a penny on this game, which is great, in my opinion. But, again, all this money <laughs> has been made, more money than any other game in the year 2018, and... Um, you know, I know, yes, 2018 is a little ways away, so now we're going to move to 2019 briefly, uh, because Fortnite, again, I believe, was the top grossing video game in the world once again in the year 2019, but this time around they only made $1.8 billion. So, you know... Uh, only? Only, oh, yeah. Okay, only. <laughs> yeah, they, so not quite as much as in 2018, but uh, still, still a lot, a lot of money, so... Um, and still the top grossing. So, you know, um, I think that speaks volumes, in my opinion, when you can create a game that no one literally has to spend a penny on, and yet you, it is the top grossing game in the world two years in a row. That, that speaks volumes. Um, yeah, it speaks volumes. It really does. Um, but I'm yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're speechless. I mean, I mean, I'm almost speechless myself. But you know, it is all about the money at the end of the day for the for the company. Yeah, that's true. Um, so um, I think it speaks not only to the the ingenious design of this game, but also um, just how much people got into this game because you know you can't make that kind of money off of like a handful of people obviously so um there are speaking of people um to this date um if my numbers are accurate uh there are currently upwards of 350 million registered users of fortnite so Wait. that is also a record-breaking number as well and that is a lot of people so, yeah. if every single one of those people bought the battle pass, then that would be just add a zero onto that 350 million, and that would be a lot of money. <laughs> 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 that would be a whole lot like more that. money. <laughs> that would be that would be a whole lot more money. <laughs> so, so yeah, that that's uh, well, technically 950, but you know what I mean. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's there. You go right there. That's there's your money. Um, that's so yeah, crazy. but yes, it is a crazy, crazy numbers we are talking here. But this is this is Fortnite. This is what this is this is what Fortnite has been able to accomplish in a very short period of time. So, um, yes. So um, now you know. I think would be the appropriate time to kind of talk about awards because Fortnite is also a highly awarded game. Um, and I'm not going to run down the laundry list of awards that Fortnite has won, but Fortnite in its only three years out has received uh, about, it looks like 18 different awards in that really? short period of, time, period of time. Yes. And I'm only going to mention the few that I find more impressive. So, um, for 2018 and 2019, it won Best Ongoing Game of the Year. 
Um, for also 2018 and 2019, it won Best Multiplayer Slash Competitive Game. Uh, yeah. It also, in the year 2018, won Fan Favorite Game. Uh, then also in the year uh, 2018 and 2019, uh, eSports Award uh, for Game of the Year, and as well in 2019 Award for uh, Excellent Prizes, which is something that uh, kind of feeds back to what I was just talking about earlier with the money. So um, Fortnite, as I'm sure you know, um, since you mm-hmm. follow the uh, competitive scene on Fortnite and the streamers and all that kind of stuff, much more than I do, which is I do. zero, by the way, for me. So <laughs> you're, you're going to be the expert on this one. Um, but yeah, Fortnite holds a lot of competitive events with a lot of very substantial cash prizes. Like we're talking millions and millions of dollars yep. in prizes that Fortnite gives away. Now, when you make billions, you can definitely afford <laughs> to give millions away. Um, but that's still a lot of money right there, you know, like giving away millions and millions of dollars, that's a lot of money. And, and I think that, that blows away a lot of other, um, games that offer like competitive tournaments and, you know, you know, even cash prizes and stuff like that, which kind of lends to, you know, the award. Um, but yeah, so it's a highly awarded game as well, despite, you know, all of this kind of thing. Um, And actually, this is something that I didn't know about that I thought was interesting that I wanted to mention as well. Back in March of 2018, uh, Fortnite also did a uh, celebrity slash streamer event on Twitch. Do you know anything about that? I remember watching it, yes. Okay, so you weren't the only one who watched it, because actually that event itself um, broke records for Twitch viewership that still stand to this day. So that was the most viewed event in Twitch history as well. <laughs> so Really? Um, yes, it was. So I didn't know that. Yeah. So so uh, as I understand it it was like a big tournament where was it duos I think where they paired like a celebrity up with like a stream like a Fortnite streamer. Yeah, yeah so that's cuz cuz that's another thing is a lot of famous people have gotten into playing Fortnite as well. It's not just, you know, small potatoes, uh, small time YouTubers like me with a hundred subscribers, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of, you know, famous people as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So that was the, the biggest event in Twitch history as well. So yeah, a lot of Fortnite has really accomplished a lot in a very short period of time is kind of the point that I'm driving at here. <laughs> so, oh, Fortnite. Um, Jeez. yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's really crazy to think about, um, three years. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, but, and there's always a, but there have been, but. what? Did you say what's the butt? No, I said there's always a butt. Oh, yes, there is always a butt. So the butt is there have been some downsides or let's say controversies or issues associated with Fortnite as well. So now we're going to look, now that I've spent the last, how long have we been doing this? I don't know, half hour singing the praises of Fortnite or whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, now we're going to talk about some of the not so, not so good stuff, which actually this is a much shorter list, but. <laughs> anyway, so um, there have actually, uh, to this date, I believe um, there have been uh, seven lawsuits actually filed against Fortnite for copyright violations and infringements and that to that nature, um, mostly having to do with the emotes on Fortnite. So that's a big um, yeah. that's a big thing. Emotes are a big thing on Fortnite. So um, there's there's a, aside from the fact that you can build. Um, which is a very, very, very distinctive feature of Fortnite. Um, The fact that you can emote is also kind of more of a distinctive feature of Fortnite as well, too. And um, there are so many different emotes. And um, there were, like I mentioned, seven lawsuits filed against Fortnite for copyright uh, violations. Uh, recently, four of those have actually been dropped. Um, I'm trying to think of which ones. I know what the big one or the infamous lawsuit that everybody probably knows about is the one for the uh, dance moves, which is the one standard emote that you get free with Fortnite. Um, that because the guy from Scrubs did that dance move on Scrubs, and right. that was one of the first lawsuits I think filed against. Fortnite was because he did that dance and Fortnite used that dance. But I have to tangent off here for a second because 
I've never understood that. And the reason being is because that was a free emote. Nobody paid for that emote. This game is completely... F the, the game is free, and they gave you that emote free with a download, right? So... Yeah. If you gave it away... If Fortnite literally gave this emote to everyone for free, how could anyone be suing Fortnite? Because they didn't make any money off that emote. You know what I... Am I missing something? Or... I don't... I don't understand. <laughs> With that one, I don't understand it either. I actually even forgot there was a lawsuit with it. And I, I love that actor. And I love Scrubs. And I remember it, but I forgot that it was a thing because it was attached to a free emote. So yeah. it didn't make any sense. Yeah, exactly. That. I mean, the other ones, and don't get me wrong, I don't think there's really much of a basis for any of these lawsuits, to be honest with you. Because um, I think that's just like kind of getting into copywriting stuff that can't really be copyrighted so um and i don't think any of them are really gonna win but um but i think you know everybody wants a piece of the Fortnite pie you know <laughs> um which is yeah. you know something else i'm gonna talk about in a second but um because like i said it's all about the money but anyway um but yeah that one especially i never understood because like i said they gave this emote away for free so they didn't make it now i guess the only argument i could feasibly see is that oh well it helped promote the game and make the game other money on other things okay that's a pretty flimsy argument in my opinion so yeah. and i'm no lawyer but i'm a, that's a pretty flimsy argument as far as i'm concerned anyway so as i mentioned four of those seven lawsuits have been dropped because there was a ruling made by a court saying that um actually if if you and and i can't believe that people have to actually be told this but you can't claim a copyright violation on something that you haven't actually copyrighted. And apparently, a lot of these people who filed lawsuits with Fortnite have done just that. So, um, yeah, stupid, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I so when that ruling came out, four out of these seven lawsuits disappeared. Um, I have a feeling the other ones will eventually. Like I said, I don't feasibly see Fortnite actually losing or having to pay any money to any of these people for any of this because this is just nonsense in my opinion this is you know you, you can't can you really copyright something as as like a simple dance move you know is that really copyrightable i kind of don't think so um but again i'm no lawyer so maybe it is i don't know but it just seems ridiculous on the face of it. And um, speaking of ridiculous, that's going to bring us... <laughs> yes, the nice segue, I know. Um, yeah. That is going to bring us to um, the next kind of drawback or trouble that Fortnite has had over the years, which is parental complaints. So, um, obviously, with Fortnite's uh, free-to-play and nature and kind of cartoony graphics... Um, the argument can definitely be made that Fortnite is made for kids, and I don't think a lot of people would disagree with that. Um, I think definitely the not. Yeah, I think the majority of the player base is probably kids. I think we're, you know, over the hill as far as that goes, but, you know. <laughs> you think? Um, yeah, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, but anyway, so, uh, yeah, so a lot of parents have complained that uh, Fortnite is, uh, you know, targeting kids, that it's addictive, that it's... Um, you know, that, that kids feel compelled that they need to buy, you know, this, the current skins or emotes or whatever. So, you know, there's been a lot of, um, you know, instances of kids uh, swiping their parents' credit cards, actually, <laughs> which I just find hilarious. Oh, I've personally. heard that. But, um, yeah, to buy the latest and greatest things um, on Fortnite. And by the way, these things are not cheap, actually. Like, the Battle Pass <laughs> is a steal for nine fifty for the Battle Pass. But these emotes and these um, these skins and stuff, like, you pay, depending on the rarity, because everything's graded as far as rarity goes, but you can pay up to 20 bucks for one skin on Fortnite, which, as an old-school gamer, I think is pretty ridiculous, and also a cheapskate, I think is pretty ridiculous. Um, you know, but even some of the, the other ones, uh, skins, you're still paying, like, 15, one, you know, some of them are $15, and $12, and $8, or I think the, the four price tags for skins that you can, or standards price tags for skins. Um, yeah. And then for harvesting tools, it's kind of, you know, more around, like, the 
eight, ten, twelve dollar range. Emotes can range from like uh, two to eight, I think, and then uh, yeah. backpacks like two to five or ten or something like well, that. Yeah, backpacks are involved with the skin though, so. Well, yeah, that's true. well. Some of them are separate, but yeah, a lot of true. them are bundled. Um, and then they have bundled deals and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So, um, but yeah, so back to my main point, um, which was you know complaints. Uh, you know, f- for uh, kids. And, uh, you know, um, I have been singing the praises of Fortnite. Don't get me wrong. I do think the game is great. Um, but I'm, I'm the game is not perfect, obviously. But nope. to all of those people uh, who are complaining about this specific thing, about, you know, the game being addictive or anything like that, to that... To them, I say, you are a fucking idiot. <laughs> and, yeah, deal with it. And I will say, furthermore, um, if you cannot control your own child, that is on you, because you are the parent. If you can't control yourself, and you find yourself buying all these things, <coughs> felts, um, you have, sorry, I had a catch in my throat. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, you have no one to blame but yourself and you know I mean what the hell people I mean we need to have some personal accountability here okay because it is not Fortnite's fault that your kid is stealing your credit card and buying things with it on Fortnite it is your fault because you did not teach your kid not to do that well enough that that is wrong. It is not Fortnite's fault, okay? So, yeah, that's how I feel about that. (laughs) Fortnite is simply providing a product no one has to buy, and uh, you know, you can't say that it's their fault. Although, to play devil's advocate, as far as the game being addictive goes, I will say the game might be mildly addictive a little bit, and, and I think the main reason for that is um, the nature of the game. So uh, the Battle Royale style game, I think, is a little addictive because it's not like, you know, your standard team deathmatch on, you know, a standard video game, right? Like Call of Duty, where you can go in and play team deathmatch and you're in the same game for, you know, 20 minutes or whatever and you get, you know, X amount of kills and deaths and whatever. You know, on Fortnite, it's one and done. You know, you die and you're gone unless, you know, up until the reboot van was introduced that your teammates can reboot you. But, you know, uh, that does kind of create a compelling feeling in my opinion, or at least in my own personal experience to want to play again, because you can get in a game and you can be dead in 30 seconds and you can be like, well, that sucked. I want to try again, (laughs) you know, and then, or you could be in a game for 20 minutes and make second place and you could say, you know, I want to try again. So, um, I think we, you know what I'm talking about, right? (laughs) (laughs) Just a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, so, you know, I mean, that's that's a thing. I'm not going to say it's not. But at the same time, you know, it's it's up to, I think it's up to the individual to kind of control that, control themselves and say, okay, I've been playing Fortnite for a few hours. Maybe I should go do something more productive with my life. Or, you know, if you're a kid playing, oh, and they're like, oh, I need all the new, all the skins and all the new stuff so I can be cool. And it's like, no, like money doesn't grow on trees, people, you know. Although really? technically it's made out of that's trees. That's thing. Oh, I know. Yeah, that's groundbreaking, right? This is <laughs> this is groundbreaking information right here on the captain's table, folks. Money does not grow on trees, although it does grow on captain's tables, apparently, as you can see <laughs> <laughs> by the beautiful uh, beautiful thumbnail once again. So, anyway, so my point is, um, it's not Fortnite's fault. That that garbage is not Fortnite's fault so um yeah so now um we're gonna talk a little more about the big picture of Fortnite. so um i think it's undeniable at this point in time that Fortnite has had a huge impact not only on the gaming industry but also in pop culture too which is uh kind of crazy to think about um a video game having so much impact in such a short period of time but um, if you look at the facts I think there's really no way to deny that I mean um, look at just look at you know how many since Fortnite has released and been such a success how many other battle royale style games have come out since then 
I mean, I can't even name them all, but there have been so many. Um, most notably, I remember um, there was a H1Z1, um, uh, Apex, you know, is more, of, you know, of contemporary um, and also more successful. But there's been so many um, unsuccessful essential Fortnite clones um, in the past mm-hmm. couple of years because everybody wants a piece of that Fortnite pie, as I said so uh, earlier. Um, but yeah, and then even mainstream games, like we've talked a lot about Call of Duty in this, um, have added a Battle Royale mode to their video games, right? <laughs> and, you know, they're not the only ones. Um, because Fortnite, while it may not have been the first Battle Royale style game, it certainly is the most well known, I think, and the most popular even still to this day. Um, right? So. Um, so it's forced at even like a lot of other games like that to kind of even add a battle royale mode to like your standard shooter, um, which I kind of think speaks volumes as well as to uh, the impact that it's had on the gaming industry. You know, obviously we mentioned the numbers, the awards, the money, all that kind of stuff, which obviously is a huge impact on the gaming industry. Um, but also as far as pop culture goes, you have all these um celebrities, professional athletes, um, you know, coming out kind of, you know, being public about their support slash their use of the game, you know. Um, I know you have uh, professional athletes, you know, doing like Fortnite emotes as like celebration dances when they score on the field or something, you know what I'm talking about there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so the Fortnite has had a huge impact in a very short period of time which again is kind of why i think it's worth you know talking about is because you know just all these numbers and records broken and um you know just everything it's just it's kind of crazy when you think about it and um it all just feeds back to and we kind of talked about this a little bit before um just the simplistic nature of the game i think it's it's kind of it's it's a case of sometimes the best answer is the simplest answer, right? Because if you look at Fortnite on the face of it, it's like, okay, you know, it's a combination of all these different things. Like we said, third-person shooter, builder, um, you know, being free-to-play, um, the evolution of the game just ever-changing constantly. And it, it really um, more so, and essentially uh, more so in older Fortnite, uh, not quite as much in recent seasons um it really just kind of brings back like that old like you remember the couch co-op days like you know back on like ps2 you know oh yeah yeah so so i know i'm not the only one who feels this way um because i know a lot of people who do um fortnite really kind of brought that back to gaming and i think i may have even mentioned it on a briefly in a couple of other podcasts about gaming um you know, it really kind of just brought that back to gaming. It's like that, you know, it's that feeling of like, you know, it's Saturday afternoon and you're hanging out with your friends and, you know, have, you know, you're just chilling and having a good time and playing some video games, you know, it's not that serious and, you know, all that stuff, or at least, you know, again, I said, historically Fortnite has been that way. (laughs) Although Mm -hmm. in a second, we're going to get to modern day Fortnite, which is a little different, but, um, but yeah, I think that's really why, you know, Fortnite, gained such a fan following would you not agree i wouldn't disagree gotcha so (laughs) thank you thank you for that insightful comment um so um yeah but now um unfortunately the game has changed a little bit in recent seasons and um it doesn't quite feel as casual anymore and maybe it's because people are fighting for million dollar prizes now maybe you know who knows but maybe (laughs) just maybe but um now uh it appears that Fortnite has kind of maybe peaked and it feels like it might be slowing down um a bit in recent seasons um kind of actually ironically starting with season 11 which is also chapter 2 season 1 I think that kind of marked sort of the start of the slowdown maybe for Fortnite, but um, it's definitely kind of been trending downward, not to the point where the game is dead. And, you know, I'm going to say this outright. Um, I'm in no way saying that the game is dead or that it's done or it's over or any of that 
nonsense that a lot of people are spouting. But um, I do think that, you know, Fortnite had its best year in 2018. You know, it was, it, it brought up a head of steam. It was so recognized. It was, you know, made so much money, got so much attention, you know, and um, in 2019, we kind of saw the game slow down a bit. And I think it's slowing down even more in uh, 2020, although I can't really find any numbers um, for that, but I, you know, have a lot of, uh, speculation and hearsay, which is good evidence, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, oh, it's the best evidence. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, um, so I think, uh, there are, there are a few problems with the game today, and I don't think anybody would disagree with that, but, um, one of the big problems I think, uh, the game has been having the past few seasons is the length of the season that we actually mentioned earlier. Um, the seasons are so much longer now on the game than they used to be that it, the game doesn't feel as fresh or as enticing as it used to, you know? Um, yeah. It, it, it's more, you know, it's more of the same. And, you know, they are still doing a good job, I think, as far as, like, items and stuff like that. But, you know, guns, that's another one. Like, they're kind of, you know, hit the ceiling as far as guns go for the most part. They can't really do much anymore with as far as new guns, I don't think. Um, although they've, you know, recycle and put old stuff back in and, and whatnot, but, um, make variations and all that stuff. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so that all kind of leads to the general problem of running out of ideas for the game. And, um, I think, you know, if you look back at the, at the history of the past few years of Fortnite from, you know, start to present... I don't think they really, the developers really anticipated like a super long haul for this game, <laughs> to be honest with you, as weird as it says, as it sounds to say that, because of all of the accomplishments in a very short period of time that this game has, um, you know, if you look at how quick they were shotgunning content back in the day, like I said, every two and a half months, three months, they were just, you know, new, like all these new skins, new emotes, new you know, um, maps, changes, just, you know, guns, uh, items, just everything they've changed. They were changing so frequently and that's really what got, what pulled so many people into the game that now when they're running out of ideas, it's like the map, you know, if we, if we look at where we are in season 13 slash chapter two, season three of Fortnite, the the map isn't a whole lot different than what it was in the beginning of chapter two in season eleven, right? <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, no, not really. The um, the only additions in the second season were the boss locations, and then they got wiped out. And yeah, but the added, right, but the thing about that is, and uh, as far as that goes, I will say that they did um they did introduce kind of more mechanics. So so the idea of, like, those boss locations that we mentioned, which was last season, that was a new thing, and that was an interesting thing, right? (laughs) Like, and, you know, the boss guns that you could only get one, there's only one of each boss gun in the game. That was cool, That was, and that was interesting, and that was unique, and that was the kind of innovation that Fortnite needs to kind of keep, you know, going in order to maintain the popularity, but that they're not really, you know, that they didn't really do so well in this season, in my and a lot of people's opinions. And not only that, but now they have a lot more competition than they did, you know, back in the day, back, in, you know, when they were brand new, because it's it's almost kind of like Fortnite was the new toy, you know, back when it was first introduced, and then especially in 2018, um, but now in 2019, and then especially now in 2020, you have all these other games that are that are coming up that are kind of doing the same thing. So it's to a point. It's like Fortnite is almost old news. You know what I mean? Um, like they, because especially I know a big one that's been pulling a lot away from Fortnite has been Apex. I think Apex has been probably the most successful battle royale game to come out since Fortnite. Um, yeah. Uh. I haven't heard that much about Apex lately. I would more say Warzone's the one that's pulling people away from Fortnite. Oh, like in modern times. Gotcha. Yeah, because yeah, I know, um, yeah, I don't know a ton about, like, like what happened yesterday, to be honest. But, um, yeah, I know I was speaking more about 2019, because I know in, uh, like, especially the latter part of 2019, I know that um, 
Apex was getting a lot of steam and, um, you know, maybe, you know, taking away from Fortnite, although maybe it has cooled down. Um, but yeah, Warzone, um, definitely, uh, as far as now goes, I could see that. Um, <clears throat> I've also read, and maybe you would know this, um, better than I would being such a, uh, avid, uh, stream watcher is yeah. that, <laughs> um, I've read that, um, the, you know, kind of player interest as far as like, you know, YouTubing and Twitch streaming and that kind of stuff has kind of been going down for, for Fortnite. So I don't know if you've seen or heard anything about that being someone who really follows that sort of thing more. I have noticed that a lot of streamers, I wouldn't say they've stopped streaming Fortnite, but it's definitely put on like a back burner because they're not having fun. Right. A lot of the streamers are just are not having fun playing Fortnite anymore. So they've kind of just found other games like the people, some people have moved on to Warzone, some people have moved on to like Escape from Tarkov and I have noticed that a lot of streamers aren't doing it as much as they used to. Some still stream it all day, every day. Mm. And even I'm just like, you're nuts. <laughs> but they still enjoy it enough to do that. But some don't. Gotcha. And actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, because that kind of is one of the chief complaints about um, the game, specifically this season. But um, it definitely has been a thing the last few seasons in Fortnite, is that the game is doesn't feel as fun uh, to play anymore. So um, why is that, you know? And and I think we kind of mentioned it a little bit before, but um, I think the game has gotten uh, a lot more cutthroat, a lot more competitive um, since the days that, you know, we started playing and the days when the game was more popular. Um, and again, maybe it might have something to do that they're offering millions of dollars in cash prizes <laughs> and people really want to get that money, you know? So... Um, yeah, I think that actually, you know, might be a big actual issue, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, like, I, in a sense, really do commend Fortnite for wanting to give back to its player base mm -hmm. by doing that, and that's something that you don't really see out of many, if any, games, especially to that amount, to that degree. But I do think that, you know, unwittingly, Fortnite might have kind of shot itself in the foot with that because, like, they were thinking, oh, yeah, we're going to, you know, keep drum up more interest and we're going to give away all this money and it's going to make people happy. And But they may have not realized that the side effect of that is now people are going to get, some people are going to get crazy competitive with the game in every and any way that they possibly can in order to win that money. <laughs> and I think that that, lends to the game not feeling as, you know, just kind of like, again, couch co-op-y, like Saturday afternoon, relaxing, having fun type game. And now it feels more like a job, I think, to a lot of these people that they think, okay, yeah. well, I have to get super good at Fortnite so I can win all that money, you know? And that's a bad thing. I think that's a bad thing, honestly. So, I think it takes away from the, the enjoyment of of the game when you have to deal with that. And, and I think the infamous, you know, term, the sweaties, you know, hmm. <laughs> for Fortnite. Um, and, and it seems that they've been growing in numbers season by season. And it seems they might've hit an all time high this season, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it is what it is, you know, I mean, who knows where it's going to go from here. I mean, it could, I, I think in my opinion, um, we have seen the peak of Fortnite, I think, and that was the 2018 year, um, where they put out so many different, uh, things and seasons. And I think that there's, there was kind of like a, you know, there's always a honeymoon period with anything, right? Like, you, you mm -hmm. know, with games and whatnot. Um, and I think that was like 2018 for Fortnite. So personally, um, I would have to say, um... I don't think Fortnite is going to continue to go up. I think at some point it's going to... It's probably going to fluctuate. I think at some point it is going to level off. I don't see the game dying, as some people would suggest. Um, you know, I No, just, I don't think it'll... I don't think it's going to go anywhere for a good while. 
Yeah, because it's just too. I think it's just too ingrained. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 carved out such a spot for itself that I can't conceive that it would be pushed out of that spot altogether. You know? Yeah. And you don't think so either? No, I think Fortnite made its name, and it's gonna be around for a while. I mean, it will probably lose a lot of players, but I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna die. It's Well, you know what they say, when you're on the yeah. top, there's nowhere to go but down, right? <laughs> but, I mean, you know, to see, I, I can't conceive, again, yeah, I just can't conceive of the game actually just dying or going away, you know, because there's gonna be a lot of, you know, games that, you know, if they try to take its place, oh, it's just a Fortnite ripoff, you know? <laughs> and then that's gonna be a problem. So if, so if any game tries to be too much like Fortnite, then you know players will see it and their gamers will see it and say oh well that's just a Fortnite ripoff so why do i want to play that and then you know but if it deviates too much from Fortnite, then we'll be like oh well that's you know a different game but i still want to play Fortnite because it still has its own niche you know yeah. um and a lot of that again really has to do with the builder aspect of the game um that you know i think no other game battle royale style game wants to put that in their game because they know that they're just going to be labeled a Fortnite clone and written off <laughs> if they do that <laughs> i personally i think that's that's what it's going to be um or that's what it would would happen so most um, likely yeah yeah so uh so yeah i don't think it's going anywhere um i would be shocked if it did um uh, but but you know there's always room for improvement um, I will say I would hope, you know, what I would hope for for the future of Fortnite. Um, I, I'm going to keep playing it. Um, you probably will too, I would assume. Uh, so yeah. Um, I would all f I would say is for the future of the game, I would hope that they kind of go back to their roots a little bit and they try to do a little better as far as, um, you know, making updates and changes and innovations. And even if they if they rehash or recycle some old things that they did, but maybe only for a little bit of time, you know, because like I said, then that period of time, they shotgun so many ideas and concepts and content that they could certainly revisit some of that stuff and kind of bring it into the new age and integrate it and you know make it a little bit different you know what i mean um yeah. so that's what i would hope for and and they could always there there's always new things they can do although again um it does feel like they're running out of ideas but i think at this point in time i think um the best thing for the franchise would just be to kind of get back to the roots a little more you know um yeah i like it to go back to where there's no ai <laughs> Yeah. Don't get me wrong. For a while, I loved the henchmen. I thought they were a neat addition to the game. But now they're just kind of getting on my nerves. Yeah. <laughs> the Marauders. Yeah, they are annoying for sure. Although, I will say, if we're talking about current Fortnite, I will say that I like the concept of only being able to get certain items or weapons from them. You know what I mean? And that they... is I do you think that's neat? Yes, but I 100% get your point and definitely do agree that stuff like that can be annoying, uh, you know, an annoying aspect of the game. And I think that it worked, again, it worked last season because that was the theme, but it's kind of, they're, they're in danger of kind of um, falling into the same pitfall that they had back at, like, you know, season 10 times where it's just like, there's just too many remnants of, like, past ideas that they're not cleaning things out and, you know, for the new stuff um i think i think that um that's kind of starting to happen again a little bit with the henchman concept which i agree with you when they first introduced it was was very neat and i liked it and it worked and you know all that but um but yeah i think they need to uh, they do need to kind of run a tighter ship as far as like you know that's like keeping things you know concise more concise than they than they have in the past because that's kind of like a lack of precision and cleaning up after themselves is kind of what led the map to be in the situation that it was at season 10 that it was just such a mess that it basically had to be destroyed and rebuilt you know <laughs> like start yeah. over um so i kind of hope that they don't go down that road again um but you know i guess only time will tell but 
Um, yeah, I hope for the best. Uh, like I said, I'm but Fortnite is not not my favorite game ever. Don't get me wrong, but I uh, historically it's been a lot of fun to play. It's not as much fun anymore, but I still enjoy it and will still ply my time toward playing it. Um, and yeah, I just uh, hope for you know again in kind of in closing, I would say I just hope for kind of more of uh, you know return to the roots of what made the game a little more fun. Um, you know, and we'll see what happens. Is there who any... knows, right? Yeah, who knows? What What do you think the future holds for Fortnite? Felts. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I know they have, they obviously have plans. Whether they're going to turn out is another story. Whether it's going to continue in the road that they are, and they're just, who knows? Maybe the whole map will be full of AI. Oh, God. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope not. <laughs> Me too. But I don't know. Um, I hope it goes back to the roots as well. Gotcha. Because I, I really enjoyed the first chapter. Yeah. But yeah, we'll I think... See. We'll see. I'll still play it, so, you know. Yeah. I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> yeah, I think my if I had to look back on it, I would say probably my favorite time period of playing Fortnite was probably season six through eight. I'd say those are probably my favorite seasons um, to play. They were the, they're the most fun for me. Um, just everything, you know, as far as guns, items, vehicles, um, you know, just overall gameplay, um, you know, more of a fun atmosphere, that kind of thing. And then, um, you know, to a somewhat lesser extent, actually, uh, last season, um, Chapter 2, Season 2, slash um, Season 12, um, that, that was another one that I really, really, really liked. Um, but yeah, those were probably my favorite time periods in Fortnite. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, um, you know, we'll, we'll be around to see regardless, but hopefully, um, we start to see more of what we like. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> yes. So, um, but yeah, I think that's probably a good place to wrap it. Um, yeah, I think okay. I said everything I have to say, um, unless you want to add anything else about, the juggernaut that is Fortnite. Not that I can think of right now, at least. All Maybe right. we'll do a part two. Maybe, if if the game changes enough where there might be yeah. a part two, who knows. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, that'll do it. So thanks for watching again, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy, and stay tuned for more new videos in the future. I would like to thank my guest, Felts Wild for joining me today to talk about the titan in the video game industry that is Fortnite. So thank you, Felts. Thanks for having me. No problem. And since uh, you're not going to remember to plug yourself, I will plug you. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, Felts Wild has her own Twitch channel that she, not so regularly, but hopefully getting more regularly, will stream Fortnite. So, if you want to catch those streams, make sure to head over to twitchtv.com slash Felts Wild. Did I get that right? Felt underscore wild, yes. Yes, yes, yes. It says it right there at the bottom of the table. The captain's yeah. table. So, and you can catch the whole captain's crew uh, playing Fortnite. So, um, we are going to try to do that more frequently. And uh, hopefully still have some fun with the game, despite, you know, the problems we've uh, discussed here. Uh, still have a good time playing the game. So, be sure to check that out. It's always a good time. Uh, and, yeah, that'll do it. So, that's it, and we'll see you next time.